Let us pray. This one hit wonder from the early 80s, the title of which was Run, Run Away. The line is, see the chameleon lying there in the sun, all things to everyone, run, run away. Now, if you know that song, it's permanently stuck in your head from this point forward, and hopefully it will leave mine. If you don't know the song, trust me, don't look it up. (laughs) But when I started working on this sermon... All things to everyone stuck in my head. All things to everyone run, run away. (laughs) Paul hasn't learned yet when he writes this letter to the Corinthians. This is his first letter to the Corinthians. That you cannot be all things to everyone. As you trace his ministry and watch him develop as an apostle of the gospel, spreading the good news, you come to realize that he comes to realize that he cannot be everything to everyone, that he's going to need to delegate because maybe there are people who are better suited than he is to be the apostle to the Gentiles. He was a Jewish... um, first-class citizen before his conversion, and that's his pedigree. He's a scholar. He's a lawyer. He knows the Jewish inside and out, the law. And that gives him a head up over somebody who is a Gentile Christian to be the apostle to the Jews. He is a lawyer, like I said. He's great at making these grand philosophical arguments and that gives him a gift that he can use when he goes to the Greek Gentiles. The Greeks love to argue points of law and philosophy and Paul is going to be really good at that. But he then goes on to say he, he became a person who was outside the law to those outside the law. He became a poor person to the poor. Those aren't his gifts. <laughs> And he realizes that he cannot be everything everyone needs in order for him to share the gospel. So he delegates to those who do have the gifts. Jesus has known all along what Paul learns and what we need to learn. When you think of Jesus healing, and casting out demons. You never think of him as refusing to do something for someone who needs his help. And in fact, when he goes to Simon's house, 
The townspeople hear he's there, and they flood to this house. And Jesus, late into the night, heals people and casts out demons. And exhausted, falls into bed. But before daylight, he's up and out of the house by himself, praying. And I can imagine the content of that prayer based on what happens next. Jesus is absolutely exhausted. Physically and spiritually, he has been healing. He has been here casting out demons. But he knows that's not the primary purpose that God sent him for. Between the time of his baptism and the beginning of his public ministry and his crucifixion, three short years. Three short years to accomplish what God sent him to accomplish. So I imagine that that night he prays to God to show him what it is God needs him most to do and to help him because Jesus compassion. He asks God, I imagine, to help him have the strength to do what he knows he needs to do. And when the disciples come, and he's still in prayer, they come and they say, Lord, everyone's looking for you. Meaning, there are more sick people, more possessed people who need Jesus. Jesus does not go back to that house. He says, we need to go on so that I can preach in the synagogues and teach in these other places because that is what I came to do. Jesus' primary purpose in those three years is not to heal. Although because he is God incarnate and God's love and compassion are so powerful, he does heal. His primary purpose is not to cast out demons, though he does so, because God is holy and demons are the opposite of what is holy. But it isn't his primary purpose. And if he was to accomplish his primary purpose, he had to turn away from some people who called out for his help. So he could move on and continue to proclaim the kingdom of God is at hand. Continue to share the gospel news of God's love. Continue to challenge what the religious authorities of the time were saying to benefit themselves rather than to glorify God. And so Jesus, knowing he couldn't be everything to everyone, because though he is God, he is human too. Praise to God to show him the way and to give him the strength to follow that way. We are not God. We are human beings. And if we try to do everything and be everything for everybody, we will spread ourselves so physically and spiritually thin that we will collapse. The story of Simon's mother, mother-in-law, being sick in bed, and then Jesus heals her and she gets up and makes dinner, uh, is put with that story for a reason. And I actually wrote, a really long paper on, on why that story, Jesus following his call rather than his heart at that time are put together. And that isn't for this sermon. But think about it. Why might those two stories have been together? If we try to do everything for everyone, even with God's help, we are going to fail miserably. And nothing we do will fulfill 
the dream God had for us in doing it. We will always fall short. Have you ever asked God to show you what God has uniquely gifted you and called you to do in this life? When you find that thing that you only are gifted to do, that place that you belong in life, and when you give yourself to that task, to that calling, it is not going to be easy to refuse to try and do everything else. Ask God <laughs> to give you the strength to turn away from all of these equally important ministries and keep you on the path to do the thing that you can do best for God, that God created you to do for God, to build up the body of Christ. Not everybody has every gift. Paul is going to come to realize that, though he doesn't yet in this letter to the Corinthians. The person sitting next to you may have the gift to do that ministry. And if you jump in there, sure I can, absolutely, let me just finish this. You jump into their chance. You're denying them the chance to do what it is God called them to do. It isn't easy to discern what it is God needs you to do. And the thing that God is calling you to do might change over time. It is even harder to refuse to do the other things that need to be done. You look over there and you see this that needs to be done, and sure you can do it. If you don't do this or do this halfway, you can take care of that too. And if you don't do it, it's not going to get done. Well, maybe it isn't. But I bet it is if it's important to God. Somebody will be gifted to deal with that. But it's not easy. Not easy at all. And I bet a lot of you are nodding inside yourselves. So what we need to do is what Jesus did. We need to pray for God to show us what it is God needs us to do and has given us the gifts to do. And then we need to pray for the strength to turn away from all those other important things that we really want to do but that will be someone else's mission and ministry. Everybody has gifts given to them by God, gifts of the Spirit, skills and, and abilities, and positions and opportunities. And everybody has a call. You may not have thought about that, but you do have a calling from God. It's important to discern what that is and be faithful to it. It's not easy. I can imagine how it must have torn Jesus apart to leave all those people back at Simon's house who needed him. But he knew he needed to go on to fulfill that call. And we, each of us, need to discern our call and follow it faithfully by God's help. Amen.